Good evening or good afternoon, I guess, really. Um, I, this is the Deerfield Board of Health. I'm calling to order at five o'clock um, and we are remote. Trevor, could you read the um, stuff? Select Board Board of Health meeting for January 22nd, uh, 2021 at 5 p.m. Uh, let's see, meetings uh, normally held in the main meeting room, municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass are being held remotely and with adequate alternative means of public access uh, and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on uh, Frontier Community Access Television and this meeting is being broadcast on uh, live TV as well. So remote meeting connection is listed below. You can always go to the Town of Deerfield's website and then on the kind of bottom right-hand corner under kind of meeting, this meeting posted, click on that link, you'll, you'll see a uh, section for our agenda. And uh, on there is a link to the Zoom meeting. You can probably travel that way to get here, but you can also call in if you're on the phone, uh, four, one, uh, excuse me, uh, three, one, two, six, two, six, Six seven nine nine. Uh, the meeting ID is nine one one six zero four one five eight zero. If uh, if you need a passcode, uh, passcode is five seven zero zero one two. Normally, you can just hit pound and get in you know, the passcode, but if you need it. So everybody, um, when you sign on or if you're on, um, please have your um, you know your device on mute uh, for landlines or cell phones. You can do star six that will mute you and unmute you um, and then all attendees should wait to speak until others participants are finished but if you can just try to try to mute as much as you can and then you know click it off when you're when you're ready to say something so welcome to the meeting can i thank uh, you trevor sure and then yeah i, I invite mm -hmm. bob holler to start his meeting I'd like to call frontier regional school committee meeting to order at 502. Thank you, Bob. Thank, thank you, Bob. Um, well, I'd like to give an update on our numbers. Um, where Deerfield is going in the red, but um, I actually feel pretty comfortable um, with our numbers. Um, there's no question we have community spread, but our numbers have spiked uh, because of the private schools coming back and um, the kids having tests uh, between the time they left and then being on campus. So um, they are being isolated and quarantined with absolutely no problem. About 16 of those cases um, are related to um, return of, of school. And, uh, and, and we have another household from the, um, a, a wait leave workplace outbreak. So, um, I, I feel like our numbers, um, we've had a couple uh, close calls that have been contained and um, I think our numbers are, are really okay. So I know there's concern about Deerfield going into the red. So I just wanted to open with that. My next, next thing was that I feel very um, uncomfortable allowing games to be um, this week played this week for basketball. Um, kids can continue to play in school. I feel like we've had a really good opportunity to, um, you know, contain anything that is in the community for the most part and that there is lower risk in our schools. So I don't, it's not a problem playing, but I think there is a problem playing games this week. So if anyone would like to make a comment, on that, I would. I would also. I, I kind of support that too, Carolyn. I think um, this is Trevor. I, um, you know, we always said that we we didn't want to play any schools that were in the red, and you know, we're always concerned about going somewhere that's in the red. And you know, it's not really fair that we'd want to go and play have play other people when we're in the red. Um, you know, it's it's been a tough uh, time. You know, uh, Carolyn did say that we you know we do have a good eye on what the cases are and where they're coming from. But it is also very perilous out there right now. You know, it's getting um, 
variants are coming around that are more infectious. Um, you know, we don't have visibility of them in our in our community yet, but um, it, it's been a really rough ride for people, and I, I fear the next you know few months are going to be are going to be tough. And I just really implore people to, to be very cautious about. You know, sometimes we, we let our guard down a little bit. We get used to kind of being in COVID and, um, you know, you can, you can think you're okay. And all of a sudden, you know, you wind up in a spot where all of a sudden your family is not. And I, I just really want, you know, we, we really, really need to keep our children in school and learning and whatever we can do to do that. Um, please keep your family safe and think about where you're going and what you're doing and how you're protecting yourself. Um, and then, uh, but I, I do, I do. I don't feel comfortable moving forward with games at, at this moment. It just doesn't feel like the right time. And the whole idea was we were going to wait to see how things were, and we're just, you know, the, the community is definitely in the red right now, and I just don't feel safe uh, moving into a new position this week. But you know, I think uh, maybe we we'd look again next week at it and see where we're at. Um, this is Dave Wolfram. I concur with both Carolyn and Trevor. Um, if I'm correct, I believe Greenfield and Montague are in the same boat that we are right now uh, and suspending their games. Um, so um, I think it's prudent of us to be overly cautious instead of taking the chance on these. I, I guess I would feel um, I would like us to try to post I know this is awful pain in the neck, but I feel like we should be posting every Friday um, if we could do this at five o'clock. If this works for Dave um, Wolfram, um, I would just like us to ha have a short meeting to review um, what is happening uh, so that we can make a decision for the following week. I know this is sort of a scheduling nightmare for Carl, um, but I think everybody's kind of in the same boat. So pushing the games out a little bit might not be as difficult as people think. So um, I'm hoping we also have that possibility. So I guess um, if there, are there any other comments? Yeah, any comments from the school committee? Bob or? Does, um, does any school committee member want to chime in at all? I think okay. those are Ben kids that we're hearing on the on the uh, on the on the uh, Ben kids. I guess we have no school committee members that want to speak. So, oh, what, uh, Bob, can I say something? I love you, yep. Missy, and then Missy. Yep, sorry, Olivia. I was actually uh, motioning because I didn't think people saw Missy's hands. Um, oh, 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 perfect. Okay. I really appreciate the way the order that this that you're really taking it seriously and then reevaluating um, and noticing that it isn't safe right now. I think we've got a really great thing coming up in front here with them starting three days, and it's really great that DES is going four days. And I know there's no school transmissions, of course, but um, I think that when we bring our community is doing some good things, and I think it's great to keep it up. But again, I, I, I want to emphasize that we're basing this on really what's happening on the ground. This is why it's so hard to make decisions too far ahead, um, because we, we really don't know what's happening. And I, we're working so hard to be on top of what's happening in our community and in each case by case and what the exposure is so that we can have um, school opening. Obviously, keeping the school safe and the kids in school is the number one priority. And um, I, I feel like right now, like I said, it's just, a, I'm a little uncomfortable going forward with the games, just with the way the other, everybody is the community's um, numbers, other communities as well. So um, I would make a motion that um, we do not support going forward with games for the, this next coming week. Um, if I can get a second. Second that motion for discussion. I think, Missy, did you, did you want to speak? Yes. Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I think that um, I, I just wanted to say that I think this is a, a, a smart move given what we see um, with the numbers and the cases. But I think, I guess my, uh, 
my encouragement would be to, I know we don't have a lot of data about the types of strains that are out there. We are uh, looking at a very small portion of cases, looking at the strains and what we've seen from other places where the strain has come up is that there is kind of a delay, but a quick spike in how these things spread. And it, to kind of keep that in mind as we, as we kind of kick this off one week at a time, if that's how we're, we're approaching this, to kind of keep that in mind uh, with this kind of high risk activity. Okay. We absolutely are. Uh, but I also want people to know that um, we're working really hard to organize vaccine. And, um, you know, I'm hoping sometime in March, the end of March, that we will start, um, you know, we'll have the school, you know, be able to in phase two in February, we'll have enough vaccine to do the school community, you know, faculty and staff that have interaction with the kids and that will be opening up for general population sometime in March. And so um, there, is a, there is light at the end of the tunnel and we are organized down here in South County. So I don't want the kids to get discouraged or feel like we're shutting them down, uh, definitely. But we're gonna watch this week by week. And that's why I'm really, I'm willing myself as, as Trevor and Dave are to um, come together. We don't need, I mean, the school committee, I feel really bad you all showing up, but we are willing to come together every week and reevaluate where we are on this and keep an eye on it. Um, and I'm grateful that you're, you're here, the school committee and the community. Me too. Me too. Uh, we, we really love to do this together with you. Uh, I'm oh, Fred, I see, actually, I see you. Normally I have to let Tr Trevor grab people, but I can see you. So go ahead, Fred. Okay, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. I just make uh, one mention um, and uh, uh, if, if I could just get two minutes of your time, I appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. As an HR manager for my organization, I fully understand uh, the difficulty of these decisions and, and obviously the implication come along with all of these decisions and, and they're not just surface decisions. There's obviously a lot to it and um, a lot that goes into it, um, including where it's being transmitted and things of that nature. Having a daughter who is a senior this year uh, mm -hmm. on the basketball team, obviously, uh, you know, it's something that um, she's been looking forward to. And, and with soccer season going the way it did and, um, you know, the, the right decision in terms of not playing games in that case. Um, the one thing I would ask uh, that you guys, you know, just consider going forward um, as you think about all the different information uh, that's out there is that, um, as you mentioned, you know, at the schools, there's been a, min a minimal amount of transmission from what the data seems to show. Um, uh, because there's uh, the safety precautions in place and there's actually individuals checking to make sure that the kids are in compliance with those. Uh, the same has been true so far with the practices. The coaches are obviously very adamant to ensure that those safety precautions are in place for the players. And while obviously there can't be um, guarantee that other schools and coaches and players are taking the same uh, precautions and steps to make sure that everybody's healthy and safe um, for, for what they can do. Uh, what I can say is that um, while they're there, this is when they're at school, but while they're at practice and, and in these settings, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time where they have uh, some oversight. Um, the, you know, the cases that are being seen in the community with the kids uh, there seems to be, they seem to be stemming from those times outside of school. And one thing that's always been great about athletics is that it gives kids the opportunity to do something uh, in a setting that's more controlled and, and kind of overseen. And I do think that um, uh, if you could uh, please, you know, just take some time to consider that um, those opportunities to play games and still be involved in sports, uh, is another school activity that helps protect the kids. I know that might sound uh, contradictory because we're talking about the possibility of them being in close contact uh, with others, which, you know, as we all know, is, is one of the uh, key factors to transmission of, of the virus. Um, but again, with the safety precautions that are, are being utilized in the practices and in the sporting arenas, it's a uh, 
uh, you could also make an argument that it's actually a, a safer environment uh, than some of the other ones that they might be uh, going into. And the last thing I just want to mention is that, you know, all in all, these are really good kids and obviously they're um, going to uh, do the right thing for themselves, for their families and for uh, their teammates. And, uh, and I think that, um, you know, knowing a lot of these kids really well, um, they, uh, you know, have um, some, we should be willing to put some trust in them uh, to do the right thing. Uh, the last thing would be that uh, by, by, you know, in the weeks to come, if, if a no decision is reached, that really doesn't give them an option. Uh, whereas a yes decision doesn't get, doesn't, dictate that kids uh, would have to play if their families have concerns, um, but it at least would give them the option. And um, so if you could just consider the fact, if you would please just factor those things into future considerations, um, you know, obviously, you know, myself, my daughter, my family will all be respectful of decisions that you guys make knowing that they're difficult. But if you, you know, could just kind of factor some of that information in the future, that would be, would be great. Thank you, Fred, for those comments. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, thank you, Fred. That's that's why I'm unwilling to, um, you know, just say a flat out no. I'm willing to go week by week. Okay. Yeah, I you. I know how important it is to the kids, and and we we really are trying to make the best decision for everybody. So thank you. Joshua. Yeah, I appreciate. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm a parent of a frontier child. I have four children. Um, I'm also a coach and uh, uh, currently a coach of the boys basketball team. And uh, I've been through this process. I've coached AAU for last six months with COVID um, in a major organization around the state of Massachusetts. Um, and I'm on the board of, of one of the largest AAU programs in the state. And we've done this safely as we're doing now with no COVID cases. And I'm not saying that it's not possible um, that this can trans, uh, transmit in these, these situations. I'm not an expert, but I've seen it done well. What we're doing at Frontier right now uh, is exactly the right types of things. Um, so the other thing I will say is that, you know, I understand this week, but leaving that option open is critical. These, these student athletes don't just walk in the gym the first day and decide, I think I'll play a sport. They've been working at this for months. And so as the Department of Health, you know, when you play, when you play a high school sport, you remember it for the rest of your life. It's that important. Whether you're a freshman, a senior, a sophomore, you know, maybe you're a freshman. Maybe you think you, you know, uh, can maybe you'll be on that banner someday up on that gym. Uh, every game, every moment counts. And these children doing it right way, in my opinion, are much less likely to spread this virus. Um, they can go and, as Fred said, out in other arenas, they can go to the YMCA and play right now. They can do it in other areas um, that are less safe than in that current environment. And the other thing I'll say from a health standpoint is it's demoralizing for the children not to play games. Yeah, they wanna practice, but they're there to practice to play games. That's why they showed up. And so from my vantage point, you, if you take that away, you know, when we think about what they're in right now in this environment, this is an outlet and an opportunity for them. And they desperately want to play games. They desperately want to play. They want to play competitively. Um, they're, all of these kids are about their school and their pride. And it's something that they get to look forward to every single day. And so it, uh, to me, um, I respect what you're doing this week, but when you think about these decisions, think about the health and well-being of these children and they're, where they're, you know, academically, you know, the reality is the other thing I'll say is the reality is that, you know, kids go to school, that's their identity in sports, a lot of them. You know, one of the reasons they excel at academics is because they get a chance to play sports. And that's all tied in. Sports is a fundamental critical part of the academic experience. And so I think that, you know, please consider the opportunity for these kids to play. That Every other 
team in this league is thinking the same exact way. These are student athletes and they are all looking forward to this opportunity. They're doing it the right way. They're willing to wear masks. And so, wow, you have a very difficult decision. I hope you keep that in mind, please. We do, we do. Thanks, Josh, appreciate that. Thank you, Josh. We, we honestly are. And I um, please encourage the kids to continue. Um, it's their good behavior and their good um, uh, practices that are going to allow this to go forward. And like I said, um, Trevor, Dave and I are all willing to meet every week to review everything. So um, if there is no, no other comments, then um, I will entertain uh, the motion. Keith's got a, Keith's got a uh, comment. Oh, Keith, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to uh, say I appreciate the Board of Health's guidance on this one. I think there's a, there's a balance we have to strike. Uh, I would advocate for kids playing all the time, but I do think that with uh, a couple of our communities going to the red, it's it's uh, it's difficult to, I'm appreciative of keeping the schools open. I think even going further uh, with sports is, is a difficult balance to strike. I think if we look at college and professional, that we're going to have to, that there are going to be cancellations, there are going to be postponements uh, out of the ordinary. I'm fully um, willing to meet every Friday. I think this is a great idea to go week to week. I would I, I appreciate the Board of Health um, taking that that lead. And then um, the last thing I just want to make sure that I want to clarify that um, for this upcoming week, it is all sports, not just individual sports. I just want to clarify which ones we're talking about. The only sport that we were considering not allowing to move forward with games was basketball. Skiing can still go ahead. Hockey is not our decision. That's a Greenfield decision. Um, I, I did, I have spoken um, with the Greenfield Board of Health Chair and um, the Board of Health in Montague. And um, they are, well, Greenfield is, is not gonna play basketball from my understanding, um, my conversation yesterday with Greenfield. Um, Montague uh, is, is a, a week by week kind of thing as well, but it's, they're concerned about their um, communities and the reason why I'm is not as comfortable is this is not a negative. I just, I put a lot of time in and because I'm very concerned about our schools. So I really make sure what the, I try to make sure what is the exposure level to our schools. And I'm just not as comfortable with the other communities grasp on that at the moment. So um, this is not a negative because we're all experiencing high numbers, but I know where my numbers come from a hundred percent. And if, and, and if I'm not comfortable, I'll tell you, and I'm just not comfortable with the, what's happening elsewhere as well. So um, if we could, I'll, uh, all those in favor? Hi, Trevor. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Thank you. Um, we could be talking about this for a long time. We are taking this serious. I want the kids to play if they can at every opportunity, but um, I have to feel comfortable with the risk. And so thank you for everybody for putting the time in to show up tonight. Um, we'll post a meeting for five o'clock next Friday. Casey, so thank you very much. We can hear, I would just wondered if you could, you could post that when you get a moment or I'll, we can send you an email. I'm on it. I'm going to write oh, an email. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. I need a motion for Frontier to adjourn. Motion. Thank you. Who second? I'll second. Every I'll second. I'm going to do a quick roll call. Bob? Yes. Lynn? Yep. Bill? Yep. Judy, yes. Mary? Yes. Uh, Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion from the select board to adjourn. I mean, Board of Health to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. Dave Wolf from second. All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, everyone. Please have a lovely weekend. Good weekend. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.